measuring your food uncooked is a little bit more accurate, especially something like protein. The marginal amount of difference that you are going to get in accuracy by measuring your food raw is so uh, minuscule that it's not worth the effort you're actually going to put into doing it. Okay, so again, measure your food cooked, eat it cooked, and then you'll be fine. Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to weigh and track your food. So you might have seen other videos on YouTube talking about this, and in my personal opinion, these videos are overcomplicated and not you know, very useful, not very relatable. So I'm gonna make it really easy to understand, but also be as accurate as possible. So the first question that I would like to answer that I get pretty often is, should I use measuring cups like you know, one cup, half a cup, things like that, to measure my food, or should I weigh my food? And the most accurate way to track your food and, and actually get accurate readings on how many calories you're eating is by weighing your food. So one of the things I recommend is getting one of these food scales. Honestly, uh, just pick up one that, that's, that's good on Amazon, go to Amazon. I just found the, the best seller and I bought that one uh, and it's pretty dang accurate. Um, and the reason why we want to do this is weighing your food is going to be a lot more accurate than using things like measuring cups. Unfortunately, a lot of times when you use something like a measuring cup, uh, if you don't completely flatten it out, or even if you do, uh, the accuracy of that is not going to be as it would if you were to weigh your food. You don't want to use things like measuring cups, okay? So the second thing, uh, or I should say the second question I get pretty often is, should I measure my food cooked or should I measure it raw? So, um, you know, whether it's proteins like chicken or beef, or if it's like vegetables, you know, should I measure them cooked or raw? I'm gonna make this really simple for you. Measure them cooked. Measure them how you are going to eat them, okay? There might be someone on YouTube or someone out there in the fitness world who's going to disagree with me who says you should do it uncooked, but let me just tell you how much of a pain in the ass it is to measure your food uncooked. First of all, you have to put your chicken, you have to measure your chicken raw on something like this, which means you have to put like something to cover it or a bowl or something like that. It's not worth it, trust me. If you measure your food cooked, you eat it cooked, and then you log it in your application, whatever app you're using, cooked, and you always measure it cooked, you're going to get accurate readings, okay? The little difference of accuracy that you're going to have, because yes, measuring your food uncooked is a little bit more accurate, especially something like protein. The marginal amount of difference that you are going to get in accuracy by measuring your food raw is so uh, minuscule that it's not worth the effort you're actually going to put into doing it, okay? So again, measure your food cooked, eat it cooked, and then you'll be fine, all right? So now let's actually go over some uh, very specifics about weighing specific types of food. So the very first thing that I want to show you is how to measure everything, all right, other than protein. I'd say protein is probably the one exception. You want to measure everything in grams, okay? Grams is a universal measuring tool, all right? Whether it's protein, or it's rice, it's potatoes, it's peanut butter, grams is a universal form of measuring food. Now, the exception to this is, is that more people that I work with understand how to measure their protein in ounces as opposed to grams. That's fine too. If you know, you know that 200 grams of protein is you know, this much protein, then that's fine, you can do that. Um, the only confusion that a lot of people get is that grams in terms of total weight and grams of actual pure protein. Because remember, proteins aren't always just the protein calories. A lot of times it's fat calories, um, you know, if you get a fattier cut or meat, or even if you have lean, there's still a little bit of fat in there. So what I like to do to make it really simple and not confuse people is to say, let's just measure proteins in ounces, all right? So three, four, five ounce proteins. And I'll show you what that looks like on the scale in a second. So that's the, the first major sort of thing that you need to, to think about is, okay, I need to measure things in grams because it's a universal form of measurement. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to first person view to give you an actual look at how I measure my food. All right, so first let's go over how to use the scale. Obviously you wanna turn it on. And when I turn it on, you'll see it's just gonna to go to a zero because there's nothing on the actual scale itself. Um, but if I was to put this bowl on here, which I'm gonna be using to measure my food, you'll notice that the weight goes up. And that's obvious, right? It's weighing the weight of the bowl. So how do we zero that out? How do we not include the weight of the bowl? Well, first we wanna hit tear, T-A-R-E, and that will zero it out. So now the bowl doesn't count in terms of weight. 
now I can go ahead and put my food in here and I'll be accurately weighing my food at that point. All right, so the first example I'm going to use is how to weigh protein. I got some ground turkey mix that I made over here and I'm going to weigh this out for my first meal. So right now my scale is on grams. So because I think it's easier to measure in terms of ounces for protein, the numbers are smaller and it's just easy to remember. I'm going to hit this unit button until I get to ounces and pounds. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to, you know, I should already have a goal for myself in terms of how much protein I want to get per meal. So I'm just going to put this in the bowl until I get a rating that works for me. I'm going to go for five ounces. Okay, so that's four, a little bit more. So about five ounces. Now, so in some cases, what you'll see is like I put vegetables in here in my meat mix. So, you know, that obviously attributes to the weight. So this might not be exactly five ounces. So in that case, what I'll do, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be perfect here because the more perfect you try to be, the more annoying everything's going to be and harder it is to keep track of. I'll just go ahead and put a little bit more protein. And I'll say that I put about six ounces of protein. Okay. Super simple. Now, if you don't cook any vegetables or anything else in your protein, then obviously you don't have to make that adjustment. But I like to make these mixes and I've made the adjustment later on. So I know that this is about six ounces of protein. And again, trying to be perfect and trying to be like 100% exact is going to drive you mad. If you're in the ballpark, you'll be doing just fine. All right, now I want to show you how to measure some dry goods and we're going to use oatmeal to do this. Now, I did talk about earlier how you want to track your food uh, cooked, obviously. Um, but when you're creating a single serving, it can actually be pretty useful to notice that here on the label, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it says one and a half cup uh, dry is 40 grams. So in order to make this work best for me, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure out that much. Now I made, or I'm going to make one entire cup worth of uh, oatmeal. So I don't want just half a cup. So I'm going to just double that number instead of 40 grams. I'm going to have 80. So let's go ahead and pour the dry ingredients in till we get about to 80. A little bit more. 81. Cool. So again, if you have like 81, 82, 83, don't be like the person who's just like, okay, now I'm going to grab this much oats and put them in here and do that. Don't worry about that. One gram of oats is going to be like three calories. So don't stress over it. If you're, you know, at 84, 85, if you're one or two, three, four, five grams over, uh, don't stress out about it. Okay. Now this is obviously one cup dry. So this is going to change. This number is going to change when I cook it because I have to add water and it's going to expand with the water and it's going to have a different weight. So let's go ahead and check that out next. All right. So I have my cooked oatmeal over here. Let's go ahead and change these out. And as you can see, that's quite a bit more oatmeal than I originally had. So this is about, you know, 312 grams of cooked oatmeal. Now, when I log this, what I'm going to do is make sure that the option that I pick is cooked oats or cooked oatmeal so that it's very clear that I'm measuring my cooked portion, not my dry portion. And there's nothing wrong with measuring out your dry portion for a single serving because you, you want to be pretty accurate with what you're going to get, but you want to measure again like this. And one little quick tip about that, by the way, because you might be thinking, well, how am I supposed to measure this with the bowl and the oatmeal in there? Well, what you can do is you can hit tear again. Okay. Actually, I should have hit tear after I took it off. And you can get a bowl of the same kind, provided it's the same weight. Put that on there, hit tear. Now you've got just the weight of what's in the bowl. All right. And it went down one gram. One of the things you have to realize about cooked food is that if it's hot cooked food and it's like, you know, it's, it's still warm. One of the things that's going to happen is the, some of the water is going to evaporate. All right. This is, uh, even more particular with things like white rice. I've noticed that my white rice can go anywhere from, you know, 300 grams all the way to 290 grams because some of the, the heat e uh, evaporates. So again, it's nothing to be worried about. If you're measuring 300 and it's 290, you're actually going to be, uh, you know, consuming less calories. So you don't have to worry too much about that. But anyway, that's how you would do dry and cooked, especially something like oatmeal. 
All right, so now we're gonna talk about one of the most pain in the ass foods to measure and weigh, and that is peanut butter. It's delicious, but it can be sort of a pain in the ass and messy. So I'm gonna show you a tip that's actually really, really uh, simple. And I actually picked this up from So He Fit. Uh, if you don't follow her, I'll put her handle somewhere up here. You should definitely follow her. She's amazing. She's based out of San Diego. So I picked this tip up from her on YouTube. And what she does is she just goes ahead and takes her peanut butter, whatever jar she has it in, and she obviously will zero this out. So it's zeroed out. And then she'll just remove peanut butter from it. And then you, as you can see, it says negative 14, but it's really 14 grams. So you'll take that and then you'll just put that in with your food or whatever else you're eating. And that's a very accurate way of measuring it. It's also the least messy way of measuring it. Now you could very well, if you wanted to, zero out like a container or something, put your peanut butter in, and then the scale would tell you that as well. I like this method where you just put the peanut butter jar or whatever it comes out of in you know on the scale and then you obviously zero it out you scoop out what you want and then whatever it says on the scale it will say negative ignore that whatever it says in terms of grams that's what you want to do now you do want to measure in terms of grams when it comes to something like peanut butter and here's why measuring two tablespoons of peanut butter i don't know if you guys yeah two tablespoons of peanut butter is probably not going to be that accurate because a tablespoon you're first you're going to have to level it out and two, you're not even gonna get everything out of the tablespoon measurement. So it's actually better to shoot for a serving size, which is 32 grams. So I, would have, I could have taken more out of that to get the serving of 190 calories, all right? So again, I recommend just putting your uh, peanut butter on the scale, scooping it out, and seeing what it says. All right, so now that we've talked about how to measure things like protein and peanut butter and oats and you know other types of produce and grains and stuff like that, how do we measure things that come in packages, like hamburgers, or how do we measure something like a, you know, a frozen meal? How do we measure those things? Well, it's actually best to simply just scan the code. So I don't know if you guys have ever done this in your app, but that code you can scan with just about every food tracking app these days. These are some burgers that I get at Trader Joe's. I'll simply scan the code at the bottom, make sure that I know what the serving size is. And so for one of these burgers, uh, it's 150 calories and that's one burger. And I'll typically have two, so I'll just double the amount of burgers that I have. So it rounds out to about 300 calories for the burger. Now that's probably the easiest way to do any type of food tracking. And if you're somebody out there who's having a challenging time tracking your nutrition with everything that you make at home, a good starting place to get used to tracking as my dog tries to get my veggies, um, is to simply buy packaged food and to scan it, to just get in the habit of it, right? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to eat the cleanest food all the time. Sometimes it's just getting in the practice of actually scanning what you're eating. The same idea goes for a pre-made meal. So I sometimes I buy one of these to mix in with more protein or more veggies just to get more flavor without having to make everything myself. As much as I like to meal prep, as you can see behind me, I don't want to, want to make every single thing that I eat. So a lot of times I'll buy these as a base for flavor and then I'll add things like protein and vegetables to them to make them taste better, okay? So the same thing goes for this. You would scan the code at the back and you would just keep in mind that what, what's the actual serving size? As you can see, the serving size is the entire meal, which is a really nice way of you know, keeping it simple. It's 300 calories for the entire thing. A lot of food companies will do things like trying to trick you, like half of it is this many calories. So it might say 300 calories, but it's only for half the meal. So just be savvy enough to look for that before you buy certain things. Because you know, someone might come to me and say, well, I eat a lot of you know, pre-made meals because I'm on the go. I don't have time to you know, meal prep every single thing that I eat. And I'm like, yeah, I totally get that, right? So whatever you buy at the grocery store, just scan it in your app and it can be a really easy way to get used to tracking food. All right, so the last major type of food or type of drink that you wanna measure is liquids, all right? So you might have a soda, you might have orange juice, you might have almond milk or regular milk, and you're thinking, well, how am I supposed to track that? Well, it's really easy, actually. If you have something like a can of Coke, like this is an um, half and half iced tea, Arnold Palmer, and then this is just a, you know, I think this is a Coke Zero, so it's not gonna have any calories in it anyway, but let's say it did. And the serving size is typically just going to be one can, all right? Be mindful though, because a lot of companies will, you know, especially the taller cans will say that one serving size is, you know, half the can. So, you know, if you were to drink, 
you know, the entire can, which most people are, very few of you, know, you are gonna be drinking just half a can of soda, um, just make sure you're mindful of the, the fact of how many calories that has, again, again, if you're tracking. But again, you can just scan the barcode here and put it in your app, so it makes it really easy. Now, something like almond milk that comes in a really big container, you're probably not gonna be drinking this entire, or you shouldn't probably be drinking this entire uh, container in a sitting, but as you can see, this has uh, you know, 30 calories per serving, and the calories is one cup, or the uh, measurement is one cup, or 240 milliliters. So like the example that we had given with the peanut butter, what you can do is, you can put the almond milk on your scale like this, you can make sure that you hit the power button. You, it should say zeroed out. Make sure that you put it on milliliters. It should have a milliliter, um, yep, milliliters there. And then when you take it off and you pour it into your bowl of cereal, or maybe you're gonna drink the almond milk, or, almond milk or whatever it is, then you put the container back on and you see the difference, right? It's gonna say negative, remember, because it's zeroed out, but it should say something like, you know, negative 45 or something like that. That way you know, okay, I've had about 45 milliliters of a liquid. Now liquids are gonna be higher in terms of the, their total weight, like this one for an entire cup, which is you know, probably something you would use for something like cereal, is 240. All right, so don't be surprised if it's a high number because liquids obviously are going to weigh more. But you know, if it said 240 milliliters less, then you know that's about one cup, right? And that's 30 calories. Now, you're not gonna be stressing about the amount of almond milk that you put in your cereal because it's 30 calories for a cup. So, you know, 30 calories in the grand scheme of all the calories you're gonna be consuming throughout the day is not a huge thing, and I would highly recommend that you don't get neurotic about this, all right? Counting calories for some can sort of trigger them to be very neurotic, to be very worried about all the very nitty gritty details. If you're just getting started with this, don't set any specific targets. Don't worry about always getting your protein this amount. Don't always worry about you know, calories being 100% perfect. This is just a way to stay accountable, all right? Calorie counting in and of itself can be pretty inaccurate, unfortunately, but there's a difference between being inaccurate completely where you, you, you have no idea what you're doing and being accurate enough to where you're making steps toward being more conscious of the amount of calories you're consuming. And that's really what we want to achieve with calorie counting. It's not to be perfect, it's not to hit every single macronutrient on target, it's to become more aware of what we're consuming and how much so that we understand, okay, this is why I'm, you know, I have excess body fat. This is why this, this is why that. And become aware and have food education and start to learn about food because it is my argument that in today's world, it is necessary to have food education. We cannot just pick things up and eat them anymore. We have to know what is in these foods in order to be successful with you know, actually understanding not only what we're consuming but how much, but also understanding the world that we live in with food and, and how easy it is to overeat. All right, so that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a nice big thumbs up. And then if you wanna see more videos like this from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that little bell, it will notify you when I release new videos. And then as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, put them in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in a future video. Gone. How can I be garbage? Mm -hmm. Central Thailand. Mm -hmm. At the side of your